What's up everybody, this is Ryan here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about what the F does model mean. So uh, the other day I was having a conversation with a junior to intermediate level developer who's just getting started with software architecture and kind of applying some MVP principles. And one of the things that I, kind of the only critique that I saw with this person's approach is that there's some confusion over uh, what the term model means in the context of model view presenter architecture. So here's the thing for anyone else who is confused about this, and I went through exactly the same problem too, is that there's actually a couple different sort of nested definitions for this word. So what I'm saying here is it doesn't actually always mean the same thing to every developer, and that's where a lot of confusion comes from. So here's the thing. There is a general definition which I use for model, and if someone uses it uh, and it doesn't kind of fit this general definition, then I think they're totally not using the term correctly at all. So. Whenever we're talking about model, whatever sub-definition we'll look at in a moment, it always has something to do with data storage and access. So it could be something small, it could be something big, like a whole database in an application, but at the end of the day, it has some specific responsibility, which is data storage and access. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about kind of the two main, for lack of a better term, sub-definitions which this word tends to take and also give you a little bit of personal bias on why I don't use one in a particular way. So many, many, many people, and I'm not blaming anyone for this, uh, when they hear the word model, what they're taught, what they think is, model is basically just a pseudonym, the same name, for the back end of your application or repository or something like that. The back end of the application, nothing to do with the graphical user interface. So a lot of people think this is what model means because when they hear like model view presenter, they know, okay, the view does user interface, the presenter kind of controls responses and logic and that kind of stuff. And then all that's left is data storage and access. And then they kind of think, okay, so model is kind of a, another word for the back end of the application. So here's the thing. It's not technically wrong from an architectural perspective to consider like the back end of your application as being part of the model because it still has something to do with data storage and access. However, this is exactly where a lot of people get really confused because there's kind of another definition of model which I think is actually closer to what it was originally intended to mean, but I can't know that for certain. So the other sort of conceptual idea with the term model is it has to do with the application's state. So here's a new word, so I'm going to try and explain it. So application state is in some sense just real world information. Since most of us are building graphical user interface based applications, generally speaking for application state, we'll have something in our application called maybe user, um, user account, those sorts of things. So for example, in user, we might have like a user ID, an email, address, personal information. If we have maybe a data model called bank account, it could have like the name of the person who owns the account, their account number, uh, transaction history, those sorts of things. So we're talking about modeling real world user information. Now, this is a little bit different than just considering the back end of your application as being the model. And the reason why is that parts of this application state should actually be sitting in the front end of your application, depending on how you architect things. So a classic example here is something like a UI model or a view model, but not in the sense that it's used normally in model view view model architecture. But in this case, I'm thinking of something which contains not only the user data, which needs to be rendered on the screen for the view, uh, but it might, so, might also contain details about the user interface, which help the view make decisions about, okay, this text box should be colored like that, and this underline should be colored blue, and those kinds of things. So that certainly should not be considered part of the back end of the application. And this is exactly why I don't like to use the word model as just a synonym for back end, because you're basically leaving out front end application state completely out of the picture, which is a problem. 
However, depending on how you structure these applications, you might have data models which sit in the back end of the application. You might have UI models which sit in the front end of the application. Generally speaking, I do recommend something like that if you're following an architecture. But for me to consider, say, a UI model as not being part of the application state or not fitting of the term model in general would be kind of silly in my opinion. So hopefully that makes some amount of sense. Again, remember, the common thread between all these different definitions is it always has something to do with data storage and access. So that's one thing about this word model which you can be certain of. My personal recommendation is to, generally speaking, try to use the word model more for things like data models, UI models, although with the model view view model architecture coming out it, and being really popular, it kind of just blew up those defin definitions even more. If we're thinking of things from a purely architectural perspective, then we can kind of consider any class. So it could be a database, it could just be like a little data model. If it has something to do with our sort of general concern of data storage and access, architecturally speaking, we can kind of refer it to the model, but I actually don't really do that anymore. Uh, when I'm thinking about an architectural perspective of things with data storage and access, I generally actually just call that the data layer to avoid this overloaded definition right here. So that's basically it. Hopefully that uh, cleared up some of the confusion. I guess probably for some of you, I just gave you more questions. But if you need help understanding what I just said, uh, let me know down in the description box below. Do me a favor, if you learned something, hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in another video. Peace out.